At my age, a lady no longer has to hide her admiration for handsome men. What are they? Eric boy. Are they friendly? I don't call a poisonous snake, my friend, on account of he don't bite me. But Jonathan said it was so peaceful. Oh, he's an artist. He prefers not to see things other people do. Snakes is snakes. Do they mean to make trouble? They never tell what they mean, ma'am. It's them young ones, especially them Tuscaroras from the south. They're the ones to look out for. I thought you said they were Iroquois. They're all Iroquois, miss. The French give that name to the Mohawks, Bonitas, Tuscaroras, Cayugas, and the Senecas when they joined up together. This is all Mohawk country. The ones with the shaved heads is Mohawks. The long hairs are Tuscaroras. They're fearsome fighters, them Mohawks. Ain't nobody, not even the French or the British, ever beat them in a battle. How soon do we reach Fort Alden? About midday. We don't have no trouble. There's the fort. How do I look, Aunt Agatha? Like a very proper lady going to tea. Huh. Evidently, you don't approve. When a woman puts on a war paint, she's more dangerous than any mohawk. Except that we like our scalps with something under them. Dry that wagon in the back of the arsenal. Keep a guard posted on it till it's unloaded. Yes, sir. Something precious? Muskets and powder. But there's something really precious. She appears to be already well guarded. Well, the chaperone may need relief. Excuse me. Present myself, madam. I'm Captain Langley, Commandant of Fort Alden. How do you do? Uh, my niece, Cynthia Stanhope. I am Agatha Stanhope. We've come to visit Mr. Jonathan Adams, the painter. Do you know him? Yes, ma'am. Where does he live? Well, you needn't get that frosty look. My niece is his fiancée. Is he expecting you? Well, no. I wanted to surprise him. You will. Do you know where I might find him? Uh, just a moment. Clem! Clem Jones! Come over here, please. Yes, Captain? Clem, these ladies are looking for Jonathan Adams. So are all the other ladies. <laughs> Clem, Clem! Miss Cynthia Stanhope is Jonathan's fiancée. <laughs> no. This is not so funny. He knows about this. My good man, we did not come here to discuss our personal affairs with you. We simply want to know where Mr. Jonathan Adams lives and where he is at this moment, and that is all. Thank you. You are very welcome. Captain Langley. Clem, where is Adams? Out there, someplace. With all those frightening Indians? There's nothing to be afraid of, ma'am. The Indians here about are our friends right now. Certainly, consider you lacks in your responsibilities if you allowed him to go out there without an adequate escort. Oh, he's not alone. He took a cow along. And my daughter, Greta. Jonathan? Uh-huh? I'm hurting all of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Greta. Rest a while. Beautiful. Oh, and the cow? It is a cow. 
Why are you laughing? Well, I always laugh when someone else laughs. It is my disposition. Mm -hmm. And if someone should cry? Well, a woman enjoys to cry almost as much as she does to laugh. Wonderful. I know. I do it for my father all the time. You know how to do everything to make a man happy. That too is my disposition. And when a man kisses you? I kiss him. I should marry a girl like you. You're very sweet to say that. But you should not marry me. I am too stupid for you. May the Lord protect me from a brainy woman. Not if she is brainy for you. Ten years from now, I will be fat like my father. And I will marry a farmer that's stupid like me. We'll have many children. Be jolly together until we die. You know, I'm beginning to think you're the smartest woman I've ever known. <laughs> I'm too happy to be smart. <laughs> the chief Kowanen. Rabbits do not talk, men do. And the crow screams from the highest branch because it is afraid to touch its feet to the ground. How will you answer me? I will answer when you tell me why you must see him. Since when does the great Kowanen permit boys to decide who will and who will not see him? Your tongue is too long. You will not shorten it. I'm in your village as a friend, and your laws protect me. I am Kyoga, son of Kowanen. I will carry your message. Then tell your father that I come to give him warning. Of what? More settlers and more muskets. White man Butler says he brings you warning of new settlers and more muskets. Greetings, Kowanen. My son says you bring a warning. Numbers tell more than words. Today, 61 settlers and a wagon load of muskets arrived at Fort Alden. Why is this a warning? Whose land will the settlers turn into plowed fields? There is plenty of land. Against whom will the muskets be used? It is wise to be strong, for this keeps your enemies peaceful. It is talk that many more soldiers will come. The eagle is not afraid of the mole. Those were my father's words. And he is dead. And we, the once proud Tuscarora, are driven from our land by whites and come like beggars to our friend the Mohawks for a handful of corn and a piece of earth on which to spread our blankets. He was advised not to make war. There was no peace without surrender. They came one by one until they swarmed like ants all over us and left us nothing but a choice of how to die. It is happening here as I saw it happen there. The Great Spirit brought the Iroquois to the Tree of Peace and taught us to listen to the eagle that sees afar. 
And the wise men told us we must bind ourselves together by holding each other's hands so strongly, nothing could break them apart. White man cannot destroy us unless we forget the great laws and so destroy ourselves first. I will make no war on the white man. Why do you want us to fight your own people? They are not my people. Once there was no greater warrior than your father, Kowanan. He is getting old. His spirit is gone. I do not understand him. I would have said at least let us take the muskets so they will not be used against us. Onita. Will you help us get those muskets? But if you are caught, there will be killing. A Mohawk is not afraid to die for his land. Learn from the Tuscarora, whose old men called us young ones, makers of fire, and chained us with their peaceful words until it was even too late to die. The muskets make us that much stronger. You heard what our father said. I take our father's advice when I take the muskets. With my own ears, I heard him say, it is wise to be strong, for this keeps your enemy peaceful. By this. She will never try to wear it, but it will make her happy to pretend it is her size. <laughs> Gates do not open again until sunrise. Aren't you worried about your daughter? They always get back just as the gates are closing. <laughs> always. You. It's sunset. All Indians outside the wall. I left my blanket back there. I do not wish to lose it. Go get it. And hurry up. Close the gates. Wagon coming, sir. Open the gates. My cow, thank you. Welcome. And I'm getting tired of keeping the gates open for her almost every night. Now, don't be too hot on her, Captain. She forgets everything when she's having her portrait painted. How did you fly in on? I gave her a ride on my broom. Dear Aunt Agatha, as frightening as ever. Dear Jonathan, as flighty as usual, even in the wilderness. Oh, that's Sir Greta. She models for me. But you were commissioned by the Massachusetts Society to do 20 landscapes. And I have not a single painting without at least one tree in the background. Show them to me, Jonathan. Well, naturally, naturally. But first, we must get you settled and talk about you and Boston and family and friends. The paintings can wait. I'd like to see them now, Jonathan. Well, if you insist. Come in, Agatha. I'm not the least interested in your paintings, Jonathan, only in your character. But you'll know me better through my work. I will know you with more pleasure when you engage in more profitable work instead of... Painting is my work, and if you've made this long journey to say the same things you've Please, been saying... Please, Jonathan, I do so badly want to see your pictures. We won't be gone long. All these miles, days and days in the wagon. Can't even say how do you do before beginning... 
Where are we going, anyway? To see your pictures. Oh, they're over there. Greta, take care of the wagon, please. So you're his model, hmm? Yes. He works very hard, ma'am. Very good, too. Look, I'll show you. Is that all you? I'm very beautiful. Yes. Altogether too obviously. Really, Jonathan, how can you live in this dungeon? I don't. I just sleep here. Keep my belongings here. Otherwise, I'm out of doors for as long as there is light. You were to be home two months ago. One loses track of time out here. There are the four seasons and Easter and Christmas, and the days don't seem to count as calendar days. Jonathan, hmm? come home with me now before the winter sets in. And get involved in politics? No, oh, no. Not me, dear. I'm a painter, not a politician. All I want to do is paint. You act like an irresponsible child. You need someone to take care of you. You are really quite wonderful, Cynthia. You made this long, hard journey to tell me this because... Because I love you. What am I to do about you, Cynthia? Marry me. Oh, you've uh, decided. Huh? Yes. We'll have a lovely home in Boston, and you'll do wonderful portraits of important people. Shades of Aunt Agatha. That's not very kind. Forgive me. I'm hungry. How can you think of food at a time like this? Well, with you, my dear Cynthia, one is not permitted to think of anything more exhilarating. I just can't understand you, Jonathan. And you mustn't. You see, you risk propriety if you do. And where would a gentlewoman be without her precious propriety? In any event, a man with a full stomach is much easier to handle. Back from a gentlewoman, and propriety links here. Yeah. Oh! 
Good appetite. The bell of Fort Alden. She should be rung every hour as a warning to all decent young people. <laughs> you have a lusty wit, madam. Miss, sir. And a spinster because my wit made me laugh every time a man proposed. In due time, the joke was on me. Oh, there you are, Cynthia. Uh, this is Mr. Butler. How do you do? You've already met Captain Langley. I presume you two gentlemen know each other. We can hardly avoid knowing each other in a community as small as this. Have you done anything worth looking at, Cynthia? There are some very interesting things. Mr. Adams has not thought to show us any of his work. Well, I didn't think you were interested, Mr. Butler. Anything that happens in the Mohawk Valley is of interest to me. Have you been here very long? I was born here, Miss Stanley. My family was the only white family in this area. Until the settlers began coming in. I used to think of this entire valley as my personal property. Well, uh, weren't the Indians here before you? Indians? The Indians are savages. They have no more rights than animals. The Spanish knew what they were doing and they made slaves of them. Well, no one will ever make a slave of an Iroquois. Then they should be slaughtered before they slaughter us. But no one will listen to me, Miss Stanhope. They'll plow their fields and dig their graves at the same time. The settlers come, and then the preachers, and the soldiers, and even the painters of pictures. Squeeze the great valley into a small frame, like a fence. And that's the end of freedom to breathe. Idiots. Frightening man. I never can decide which he hates more, the Indians or the settlers. <laughs> I'm not sure he's quite sane. He's wrong about the Indians, I know that. We leave them alone, they'll leave us alone. before you slaughter each other. They're most likely gone by now. We'll form a detail and search the fort from one end to the other. How'd they get in here? Fine bunch of soldiers. I'll find out how they got in here. Well, come on, sit down, finish your supper. Eat at a time like this? Maybe you'd rather go to your room and go to sleep. Who could sleep with all this commotion going on? By the time you're ready for bed, it'll all be over. I am rather tired, Aunt Agatha. Somebody better make certain there are no Indians in our room waiting to scalp us. <laughs> Come along. Sleep late tomorrow morning. What will you be doing? Working. With that girl? 
Mm -hmm. That girl, and the cow, too. Picture isn't finished yet. Sleep late, dear. Good night, Anne Agatha. This isn't Boston, Cynthia. A long face doesn't stand a chance against a round of ammunition in the right place. from behind, if they were attacking us. Someone must have opened it from the inside. Been entertaining any Indians lately? No more than usual. Fetch a keg of potty. Uh, been so peaceful so long, I plumb forgot about that tunnel. What got into those redskins tonight, Captain? I don't know. Mean, just plain mean. Killed for the love of killing. Should be skinned alive, every one of them. The dirty, mean, ignorant, slinking redskin skunks. For letting you take your land away from them? Whose side you on? Nobody's. I'm a painter. You sound like an Indian lover, Mr. Painter. I have no reason to hate them. You seen what they done tonight? Maybe it was our fault. If you don't like how we do around here, you can get out. Messing around with pictures ain't gonna help settle this valley. Put it in the tunnel. tomorrow morning, then I'll smuggle you out of my wagon. Why? Maybe I just don't know any better. You are not like the others. People have been telling me that since I was six, and I still don't believe it. Trouble is, the others aren't like me. That is too bad. Well, don't be so timid. I only want to see the other side of your face. Magnificent. You must let me paint you. Sorry, but it's the best I have to offer. Good night.
Good morning. Good morning. Now, Jonathan is going to fetch the cow. I wonder why he bothers to paint the cow when he already has you in the picture. And the cow is expected by the Massachusetts Society. I am the surprise. And the men carry hot water jugs when they go courting a lady? Good morning, Greta. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Jonathan. Ah, perfect light today. Don't want to lose it. I'd like to come along, Jonathan. After last night? Oh, dear, I wouldn't think of it. No telling what those Mohawks might be up to today. Well, you shouldn't go either. I, uh, I carry a beautiful charm along that will protect me. Oh, I didn't mean you, Greta. You can't go along either. I'm only painting the cow today. See you at sundown. Who will get your lunch? Um, I'll uh, milk the cow. <laughs> Open the gates. Anyone leaving the fort today does so at their own risk. Captain Langley will not be responsible. All right, he's not responsible. Open the gates. get over it. Which is in love with you? Neither one. And yet they, they kiss you? It amuses them. An Indian woman does not kiss, not even for amusement. Come up here next to me. Ooh. Bonita, I'm going to kiss you. And just why are you laughing? You look so long-faced, and your mouth became little as if you'd eaten a bitter root. You're supposed to close your eyes when you're kissed. Do I close my eyes to watch a sunset? What does that got to do with it? Your sunset is as beautiful as the spring flowers or the silver path of the moon across the water. The eyes open to welcome beauty. They close only to shut out ugliness. So kissing must be ugly. The way you put it, it sounds logical. Only it isn't. Are you married, Anita? No, not yet. Why not? I'm sure there are many. Oh, there are many and there are none. And I am afraid. Afraid of what? The white man, what he will do to us. I heard you talk to that man in your room. There was no hate in your words. Your heart was good. Come to our village. Learn about it so that you may tell your people that we wish only to live in peace with them. You let me paint what I say? Oh! Get in the back. I will not. I... Why are you with the white man? Because you, my half-grown brother, and the brave Tuscarora warriors left me behind. We had no chance to... You will have plenty of chance to explain to our father. You may come back to your place, white man. The fire is out, and even the smoke crawls on the ground like a frightened dog. Come out! talk so much. They waste their breath if they talk about me. I am no Mohawk. You are an Iroquois, and my father is chief of all the Iroquois. When a young fire burns so fiercely, 
that its flames reach for a tree, it must be put out before it burns down the forest. Not put out, but made to burn where it should. They broke the peace when I told them not to. Rakawa, the Tuscarora, led them to it. A guest must respect the house of his host. Youth and hate make dangerous thoughts. He has nothing left but revenge. We must try to understand. Ow! Ow! That hurts. Be more gentle, Onita. The white man is tender. And like a young pig, cries at the smallest pain. Rakawa, you talk like a fool. A man would not say that to me and live. Now you talk like a boastful fool. Stand up, Kyoga. How brave you are, Rakawa, to fight a half-grown boy. Kyoga, but you'd better put on some more size before you challenge a man that big. Will you teach me how to? <laughs> sure, I'll teach you. A good guest does not create disturbances in his host's house. I beg you to forgive me. And please do not be too hard on him. I told you he was our friend, Father. I believe it. You will be welcome always, wherever there is a Mohawk fire. I will paint pictures of you, Kiwanan, and your ways. And I will show them to my people, so that they will know you better. He who fills his mouth with big words ends by eating dirt. Any sign of the wagon yet, Sergeant? No, sir. All right, close the gates. Has he ever stayed out this late before? No, miss. It is very disturbing. Most likely killed by the Indians. What a horrible man. He should not say those bad things unless it is true. And what else can it be? There aren't any pretty women out there, are there? I insist that you and your soldiers make an immediate search for that man. Where would you search for him? I'd start with the Mohawk village. They may not be agreeable. Then burn it down. We don't happen to be at war with the Mohawk. What was last night? A social visit. If you won't send your soldiers, I'll gather the settlers and we'll go ourselves. The gates are closed, Mr. Butler. Neither you nor anyone else goes out of this fort tonight. There's no reason yet to believe Jonathan's had trouble with the Mohawks. Maybe he lost his cow and still looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Gagawita, who brought love and laughter and the tree of peace to the Iroquois. I didn't know an Indian could laugh till I met you. Does the small bird sing when the hawk circles his nest? And as for love and peace, you might as well have told me the Indians have wings and fly among the angels. They do. Why has the white man never learned to love? Does the hawk love when he circles the small bird's nest? Then you do know love. As you know peace and laughter. I'm glad. And from Ontario, where live the Hurons, came De Gagawida, father of the Iroquois, to plant the tree of peace 
beside Lake Onondaga, the tree of peace whose roots are in the heaven. How can you stand by and do nothing all this time? He knew it was not a good time to leave the fort. He's city bred. He doesn't understand these things. He didn't realize how dangerous it was. He should have. He's been here long enough. He used to make out like we was the main one. He's most likely found the truth by now. <laughs> how can you laugh? They laugh because they are men and try to hide with laughter that they're afraid to go out there and look for Jonathan. That is why they laugh. I ain't fighting no Indians for that painter fellow. I like hair on my head. Like my crops mean more to me than he does. Let this go unpunished and you'll lose your lives as well as crops. Butler, I'll not have you stirring up a war against the Mohawks. The war has started, Captain. That senseless little raid several nights ago, and now this. The crafty devil's feeling out your courage. When he finds you haven't got any, he'll come in one night and slaughter every one of you. He's right. He's stupid. Or crazy. The Iroquois are thousands. We are maybe 200. How can we punish them? Well, that's your problem, and you'll have to solve it without us. We're going back to Boston. Yes, that is very wise. I'm not leaving here until I know what happened to Jonathan. I always knew I'd die a spinster. Now, where is he going? Captain from the fort. Let him enter. <laughs> Is this the 
the white friend's greeting to Guanan and his family? I beg your forgiveness, Kawanan. This thoughtless imp of Satan has been gone for days, and we thought him dead or lost. After all my worry, it struck me funny to find him peacefully employed at painting her portrait. You would do better to be angry with him. That comes now, with your permission. I should beat your brains in for all the trouble you've caused. What has he done? About driven me crazy, that's all. The settlers don't understand the Iroquois Kawanin. They listen to this madman butler who frightens them with gory predictions of massacre by painted redskins. When Jonathan failed to return, he promptly said the Indians killed him and started agitating for a war against you as punishment for your crime. He's got the people all stirred up. I guess I'd better get back to the fort as quickly as possible. Show myself alive and happy. Will you be back? Quickly as a horse can run. Kyogo, you will go with them. He who plans war does not send his only son into the enemy camp. They will understand that better than 10,000 words. Each time I look upon Kawanan and his wife, Minika, I thank my God for them, their wisdom and their goodness. Long life to you. And to you, long life. How soon will you be in? I've got some paintings to take, and I want to bring back some more supplies, so I'll take the wagon. We better take back that cow, too. And I won't wait for you. I can try to get in before sundown. We'll be back with tomorrow's sun. Kyoga. Yes? Be careful of your manners among the white people. Yes, Mother. I don't understand it. He promised to be here by sundown. Could something have happened? Can't think of anything. Everything was certainly peaceful enough when I left. That Jonathan, when he is painting, he forgets time. Might as well get some sleep. should know better than to hide in shadows when there's an Indian worry on. An Indian worry? I thought the Indians were peaceful. You said so yourself, Captain, and you know better than anyone how to read the Indian mind. Evacuate the fort. Get out of the valley or you'll all be dead within 24 hours. You worry too much, Mr. Butler. You will get bad stomach trouble. Now this day we are met together. The Great Spirit has appointed this day. Now this day we are met because of this death which is our lot. Now into the ground will he be born, the young Kyoga. Now then, we wipe away the falling tears so that peacefully you may look around. Then something stops your ears. With care, we remove whatever it is, so you will hear the words to be said. There is a stoppage in your throat, and we take it away that you may speak your hearts. Every day we are losing our men. Into the earth they are born. Also our women and children and our grandchildren. 
so that you are sitting in the midst of blood. I see the ghost of the Tuscarora walking through the woods, and with them I see the ghost of the Mohawk, for you are dead, dead as Kyoga is dead, killed, killed as Kyoga was killed by the white man. And the ghost must walk the earth until the last day, because the white man has plowed up the burial ground, and there is no place for the dead to rest. This is what I see, as I see Kyoga dead before me, and no man saying the blood of a hundred white men for each drop of young Kyoga's blood. You grieve because you have not the courage to fight. You are dead. Dead! No! No! Rakawa the Tuscarora speaks angry words, and maybe with reason. But not he nor I, no matter what is in our hearts, can make war. That only the council can decide. And you will talk for peace, because your women owned your mind. And a white man owned your daughter. I've seen with my own eyes. No. Anita, go to the house. The white man killed my son. He will not kill my daughter. I love your daughter. The white man does not know love, only conquest. Let the runners go out to all the chiefs of the clans for a war council. Why did they kill my brother? I don't know, Anita. I can't even begin to understand it. They must have known it would start a war. There's a madness about this thing. That the moon were making ugly faces at the sun. And the stars were chasing each other like mad dogs. For they are mad dogs, these white men who would make war to destroy each other. What are they made of that they would deny their own people? What white man has done that? This man, Butler who came to tell my father of the new musket. What? Why? To make my father war against the settlers. Jonathan, you must leave while there is still time. If the council decide for war, and they will, they will kill you first. But why would... What? He doesn't matter now. Jonathan, think of yourself. You are a white man. Blood for blood. Jonathan for Kyoga. They will kill you and throw your body through the gate of the fort, and that will be their declaration of war. <coughs> they have decided for war. I must try to stop them. No, Jonathan. They will kill you. Go now. Jonathan! Regardless, I am still your friend. You must not blame all white men for this murder. Let me find out first what madman did this thing. We offered peace. They gave us death. Now they will have war. Let his body carry the flaming war arrows to the white man. So be it. Mother, they've taken Jonathan prisoner. He is our enemy. You know he isn't. I know his skin is white. I do not know the color of his heart because I cannot see it. You do not sound like my mother. I am also Kyoga's mother. I love Kyoga. You also love the white man. And I will hate those who hate him. And I will kill those who kill him. Even though it be my own father. If the law be blood for blood, then I too must obey this law. This is a man-made law. For men do nothing they enjoy so much as dying, knowing that women will go on making new life to take the place of all the wasted dead. What are you waiting for? Go, free this man, send him on his way before they cut him up in pieces, the bloodthirsty fool.
think so quick, white man. There will be fire and a tearing of the skin a little at a time. No, you will not die fast. You will die piece by piece. And I shall take the first. <laughs> On the other side, there's soft brush. You will not be hurt. You're coming with me. I belong with my people, you with yours. I'm not leaving without you. Will it do any good for you to stay here and die instead of going to warn your people? Do I love you, Onita? I'll come back for you. You see, Jonathan, I keep my eyes closed when I kiss you. Now I know why. Tell me. To love is to close one's eyes to everything except the beauty of love. I'll go while my eyes are still closed.
the Colonel, we've had warnings, so we'll be able to hold him off for a while. But he better get help here as fast as he can. Yes, sir. All right, close the gates. Open those gates again. No one else leaves the fort. I am not a prisoner. I will not be detained like a prisoner. We need every man here. I gave you warning, but you wouldn't listen to me. Now you expect me to die with the rest of you. But I'm not such a fool. Open those gates and let me make my own way. Butler. Why did you give them warning, Butler? What information did you have? It's enough that I warned them. You said they would attack within 24 hours. Yes, that was a good prediction, wasn't it? Kawan and son Kyogo was murdered approximately 24 hours ago. Did you know that, Butler? What is one Indian to me? How did you know Kyogo was murdered? It came to me in a vision. How many shots were in your vision, Butler? As many as it takes to kill an Indian. One is enough for a man who knows how to shoot. But there's twice as much pleasure in two. And what pleasure were there in going to Kawan and then telling him about the new muskets? That's a lie. A Mohawk told me. You take the word of a Mohawk against that of a white man? Mohawks don't lie, Butler. You know that. You killed Kyogre because... They're coming! We'll let you out, Mr. Butler, since you insist. Open the gates! Tell the Mohawks we use the new muskets most regretfully. If you have the chance... back. 
but we'll give them the same and better when they do. Peter, bring wine. Free wine for everybody. And brandy, too. It is too good for the Indians. They won't appreciate it. Oh. Oh. Buck up, man. It's not nearly as painful as childbirth. And how would you know, miss? We gave them what we did. They've run off with their feathers dragging. Will they come back? And with more men. What if help doesn't arrive in time? We don't think that way. We say we'll hold them off until help arrives. Jonathan shouldn't be allowed to fight. He might be blinded or have his hands wounded. He mustn't be wasted this way. He's an artist. He would not even be a good artist if he were not first a man. And today is fighting day, even for us women. Greta, I've said some nasty things about you, and I'm sorry. I did not even hear them. It is my disposition. Greta. Do you love Jonathan? Jonathan does not love me. Nothing else matters. It is that way many times. Love commands, but never obeys. I must bring wine to the men. They are thirsty. Well, what are you standing there for? These people need tending to. Well... Come back to Boston, Jonathan. No, not to marry me. I have no hope anymore. But to work, or at least to live to work. I don't know, Cynthia. There's lots to think about.
dead are like leaves of grass underfoot. And yet they died for nothing. For who has won this battle? Neither white man nor Indian. We hold you prisoner, Kawanin. But not the great nations of the Iroquois. For now the Iroquois will listen to the warnings of the Tuscarora, and the war fires will burn from the salt ocean to the great river. The white man will be driven from the lands of the Iroquois with the French a hundred years ago. Kawanin! There's the man who killed your son. He was no man's friend, not yours nor ours. He would have had us destroy each other to have this valley for his own. Is it for this man we must set our world on fire? Do we give him what he wanted even though he is dead? Too many have died already because of him. Captain. That's all of them. Take good care of them now. If you ever come to Boston, do come and visit us. You too, Great. It's really been wonderful knowing you. I must say, I'll certainly be glad to get back to Boston and civilization away from all these disgusting Indians. Deliver my paintings to the Massachusetts Society, Cynthia. There are 11 more than they ordered. Aren't you coming with us? No, dear Aunt Agatha. I'm staying right here. Goodbye, Cynthia. Have a good trip. Love commands, but it never obeys. Greta taught me that. You always knew that, Cynthia. You are also a woman. Greta, I still think you're the smartest woman I've ever known. Now we can truly dry our tears, for the Great Spirit has sent us a son in the place of he who was taken away. And for this reason, we give you the name Kyoga. May you be happy until your spirit leaves us. Now, go to Onida. Why are you closing your eyes? I'm waiting to be kissed. In front of all these people? Well, there are some things worth learning from the white man. 